Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Health Mantra. I'm Heather and with me today is Dr. John Muchahari, an accomplished consultant pulmonologist from Manipal Hospitals, Goa. Dr. Muchahari excels in treating lung conditions like pneumonia, tuberculosis, bronchial asthma, lung cancer. He's also trained in advanced procedures like bronchoscopy and endobronchial ultrasounds. Notably, Dr. John Muchahari also performed Northeast India's first ever whole lung lavage. Now, we will talk a little bit about that later. First, let's go say hello. Hello, doctor. Yep. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Yeah, thank you so much for having me in the program. Yeah. So, doctor, you're an interventional pulmonologist. Those, those are two big words that I've strung together right there. Would you like to tell us what it is exactly that you do? Uh, yeah. So, basically, interventional pulmonology is nothing but a, a medium in order to do the diagnosis and treatment of certain lung conditions. So basically we use instruments uh, which are known as endoscopes, bronchoscopes, so that uh, we aid in the diagnosis of certain diseases which uh, we may not be able to diagnose uh, uh, by use of uh, routine uh, investigations such as uh, you know blood investigations, CT scans and all that. So basically it's we are intervening in a different way in order to aid in the diagnosis of you know certain lung conditions and even treat some lung conditions with the help of it. When you say different way, what do you mean exactly, doctor? Uh, basically, uh, there are some lung conditions in which you need a definitive diagnosis. For example, uh, a person is being diagnosed to ha uh, having, uh, for example, a cancer of the lung. So in that case, the CT will give you a probable diagnosis, telling that mostly it is cancer of the lung. So how do we prove it? So basically the cancer of the lung is a growth in the lung. So we need a tissue diagnosis in order to prove that it is lung cancer and what type of lung cancer it is. Okay. So for that, we do a procedure which is known as bronchoscopy. So with that bronchoscopy, we take a biopsy and then we prove that it is definitely a lung cancer, which was uh, detected on a CT scan. So this is how like a uh, few ways in which we use the uh, intervention for proper diagnosis and confirming the diagnosis of certain lung conditions and diseases. So you said lung cancer. Yeah. Are there other conditions as well that you can use uh, interventional pulmonology and to, to treat, to diagnose? Yeah, actually in, uh, when we come to intervention pulmonology, it's a very broad term right now and it is advancing. So basically uh, there are various instruments that we use uh, in intervention pulmonology and there are various uh, uh, ways. So basically the most common instrument that we use is a bronchoscope. Uh, so it's just like an endoscope uh, which uh, is used for you know uh, doing uh, this uh, for the diagnosis of gastritis and all the gastroenterologists use an endoscope. Yes. So as a pulmonologist we use something which is known as bronchoscope. Okay. That is like it's like a small uh, tube with a camera inside and some working channels which we go inside the lung and okay. inspect the lung. Okay. Okay. So that is one is bronchoscope and other instruments that we use are something known as endobronchial ultrasound. So basically we all know that uh, ultrasound is being used on the body from outside. But in endobronchial ultrasound, we'll be putting it inside the lung through the airway. Okay. Because there are some parts of the lungs which you cannot access uh, with the help of a bronchoscope because it's outside the airway, outside the tunnel. So that's why we use the endobronchial ultrasound to detect any abnormalities and take a biopsy out of it. So again, there are two types of endobronchial ultrasound that is linear and radial, which I'll be telling um, later. Then another one is called as thoracoscopy. Okay. So thoracoscopy is again used to treat pleural diseases. So basically uh, when we see the lung, the lung is being covered by, it has a covering. So when people come and tell that uh, I have fluid in my lungs. Okay. So it simply means that it, uh, the term is like the person is having pleural effusion. Mm -hmm. That is the lung is filled in the covering. Okay. So now there are various causes again of pleural effusion. So when we see the uh, diagnosis of pleural effusion, the most common cause in India is tuberculosis. Okay. And it can be secondary to cancer also. Uh, so mostly these are the two most common cause of pleural effusion we, we, uh, which we find over here. 
So, and uh, in order to diagnose that, the definitive treatment is thoracoscopy. Because again, the gold standard for diagnosing a, a cause of pleural effusion, mm -hmm. especially tuberculosis, is taking the biopsy from the pleura, from the covering. Okay. So that we can do only by performing the uh, procedure called as thoracoscopy. So mainly these are the three uh, bronchoscopy, endobronchial ultrasound and thoracoscopy. So these are mainly being used in interventional pulmonology. And there are other um, things like, uh, uh, you know, uh, for example, the airway that we breathe, sometimes mm. there are strictures. Okay. Uh, I mean, you see, say like it's, there is narrowing because of tumor infiltrates or because of many other conditions. So we do something known as stenting. Okay. We place a stand yeah, in the airway. airway. So we place a stand in order to uh, widen it so that the person can breathe nicely. So these are some of the intervention procedures like airway stenting, uh, balloon dilatation and uh, yeah. So this we perform. Uh, doctor, how do you determine, uh, you know, which candidates are suitable for interventional pulmonology? Yeah. Um, it's like... Uh, for example, when a patient comes to us, uh, we first evaluate the patient based on clinical history. Th that is the gold standard. Any patient comes to me, we'll be evaluating uh, the patient, like what is the diagnosis? We want to know why the patient came to us and mm. what is the problem with the patient. So first is we talk to the patient okay. and ask the history. So that will tell us like, okay, maybe he is having this kind of issues. This, mm. is the, this may be the diagnosis. Then next step is we go to the clinical examination. Okay. That is, we examine the patient, okay, and see like what are the abnormalities that we are finding. So we come to a, you know, uh, a narrower diagnosis, uh, like narrow down the diagnosis. So again, but we have to come to a single diagnosis, like what it is. Yes. Then we take the help of blood tests and all this imaging, like X-ray, CT scan, all these things. Okay. So that will give us a broad idea, like what the patient may be having. So, in uh, interventional pulmonology, uh, the thing is that, um, for example, let's take bronchoscope. So, okay. what are the indications of bronchoscopy? So, we, uh, whatever diseases fits into that indication. Hmm. So, we will uh, do the procedure. So, basically in lung cancer, when there is a growth, as I've told earlier, hmm. so to take the biopsy, we use a bronchoscope. And second is, for example, we are suspecting some tuberculosis or some bacterial infection in the patient. So the first step is we take the sputum from the patient, the cuff okay. from the patient and send for investigations. Yes. And we see if the reports come or not. But most of the time what happens is that the patient is not able to give out a good quality sputum okay. or the sputum doesn't come out. So how do we take it out in order to find what is growing inside? Hmm. So we again do a bronchoscopy and take the sample, which is known as bronchoalveolar lavage to okay. find out like if there is any in bacterial infection and tuberculosis is the most uh, common infection that is present in the developing country, especially in India. So that aids in diagnosing that. And uh, the other use of bronchoscopy is foreign body removal, which is very important because uh, especially the kids mm. or uh, sometimes in adults also, sometimes unknowingly uh, there is ingestion of foreign body which goes in the airway. Yes. Yeah, so how to remove that? So we use bronchoscopy and uh, again there are again two types one is known as rigid one is flexible okay. so you can use either of it depending on the condition so again foreign body removal is one of the use so basically uh, the biopsy the bronchoalveolar lavage and foreign body removal and sometimes like for check of the airway it's patent i mean say it's narrowed to see the condition so these are the main uses of bronchoscopy that we use as an indication Doctor, you were, uh, you know, one of the first to perform a whole lung lavage <coughs> back in Northeast India. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what does this encompass? What is a whole lung lavage? Why is it so important? Uh, so basically, <coughs> the indication of that patient, so basically I, I have uh, done my training in intervention pulmonology from uh, Northeast Indra Gandhi Institute of Health and Medical Science. So that is in, in, Shillong, in Shillong. In Shillong. Yeah. So I was working uh, with uh, one of the most uh, famous pulmonologists. He's also an intervention pulmonologist in Northeast okay. and his name is Dr. Vijay Noel. So he has been the, uh, like the one to teach everything to me. Okay. So what happened was that a patient came to us which was diagnosed as something known as interstitial lung disease. So the patient was very young, 32 year old. So he has been roaming here and there 
you know being diagnosed as ILD and interstitial lung disease which is also known as ILD in short okay. so he was being diagnosed as ILD treated and he was not getting well so finally he came to us so we were very curious because it was not matching with what he was being treated so we decided to perform one bronchoscopy okay so I did a bronchoscopy and I took the lavage so that lavage was very milky can you explain what is uh, a lavage? lavage is like we put a saline like a uh, fluid in the lungs and aspirate it out okay and we see like what is the condition of the fluid and we send for investigations like to look for any infection mm. or anything such okay so over there we saw like it was very milky so we had a doubt like it can be something known as protein al uh, alveolar pro uh, pulmonary alveolar proteinosis which is known as pap okay yeah so then we send it for investigations for a inv investigation then it was confirmed that he is a uh, the uh, patient with pap that is okay. which actually pap is very rare uh, uh, rare uh, rare condition and the only treatment for that is whole lung lavage so after he has been um, diagnosed as pap so after some few weeks after like preparing him for the ot we took him to the operation theater and then uh, we have to do that whole lung lavage under general anesthesia okay so what we do is that we clean up the lung basically because, in simple yeah, words in, in simple words so basically in pap the condition is like uh, there are these proteins in the lung which are is not, not supposed to be uh, there. yeah which is not supposed to be there which is being cleared naturally in us Okay. Because of some anomalies in the lung, that protein is not being cleared in and spreads. Okay. So that uh, creates difficulty in breathing and distorts the architect of the lung. So our aim is to remove out all the protein out okay. in simple words. So that is possible only by putting the fluid inside and taking Aspirating it out. Because it's a very thick fluid and all that. So we have to like, you know, take it out. Okay. So and we did it it took nearly around some four hours because we had to nearly in uh, because in both the lung it is there uh, we have to do it only one lung at a time oh okay yeah we cannot do it both the lung so there is something known as double lumen ventilation where we ventilate one single one. lung and do the procedure on the other lung okay yeah so we did that it took around four hours so it was successful so four hours for one lung for one lung and then after that we repeat the other procedure maybe after two weeks or a month okay on the other, other lung. side yeah so the patient even after one lung lavage the patient recovered uh, like very nicely and now the patient is happy and doing fine so yeah that was the first case in northeast india along with dr uh, vijay that's awesome i yeah. i believe that uh, in goa also now we are able to offer this treatment yes yeah, sure uh, if any patient is being diagnosed to be having pap that is pulmonary alve alveolar proteinosis surely why not we can go for it in here in Goa? Yes, yes. Okay. Doctor, you spoke something about endobronchial ultrasounds. You mm -hmm. said there's linear and uh, there's a radial. Mm, yes. Can you elaborate a little bit? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, endobronchial ultrasound, uh, basically there are two types. One is the linear and one is the radial. So basically, when we see the lung structure, like uh, the lung is made up of airways. So we can see what is there inside the airways I, as i told with the help of a bronchoscope but there are something known as mediastinal lymph nodes so that is outside the airway okay there's something known as lymph nodes like uh, which are present in even normal people okay in, it is present in all of us but in certain diseases it becomes big okay it enlarges in size yes exactly uh, we can take it that way so it becomes large in size so now basically in tuberculosis there are certain diseases like tuberculosis and something known as sarcoidosis and sometimes it can be tumor okay uh, like the tumor is uh, for example like you are having tumor maybe of the lungs of the stomach or anywhere and it spreads and it goes to that particular lymph node okay okay in the mediastinum so uh, it a and after that it enlarges so uh, and sometimes it can be reactive also so this can be uh, taken up by doing a ct scan that is known as uh, contrast enhanced ct scan mm. so now when we have this kind of things that is known as mediastinal lymphadenopathy so how do we diagnose that okay so the only way we can diagnose is by doing something known as transbronchial needle aspiration so that is uh, possible only with by doing linear ebus so linear ebus is just like a bronchoscope which is a bit wider which has an ultrasound probe on the edge okay with a camera and some working channel so again the same thing is we that send we, it in yeah, through the airway. we go through the airway then we inspect where is the uh, node 
hmm. because it's an ultrasound and it will detect it. So once we find that it is on that area because it is outside the airway. For okay. example, this is the airway, it's outside. You cannot see. Only the ultrasound will detect it, which is over here. Hmm. So when we detect that place, we take the core biopsy of it. Okay. Yeah, for the diagnosis. Because as I again told you, the imaging will just tell it is suggestive of mediastinal lymphadenopathy. But what is but the cause of that? So how do we know? The only possible is by doing an linear uh, an, uh, endobronchial Endo ultrasound, which uh, will detect that lesion and take the biopsy. And in short, the radial EBUS is f used for like, you know, uh, peripheral lesions, like which are very small, especially the tumors or anything. So it will show us that it is uh, in that area. Hmm. And same thing, that is also in the airway, but outside the airway, which okay. is in the uh, periphery location of the lung. So when I put a radial EBUS, it will show that, huh, it will signal that it's Where here. It is, yeah. yes. So we can again put a bronchoscopy, put the biopsy, take the biopsy from that area and go for the Basically, diagnosis. you mean tissue sample? Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, doctor, you clearly bring, you know, a wealth of expertise to your field. Uh, are there any emerging trends? Uh, how do you see the future of interventional pulmonolo pulmonology? Um, in this world of advancement, uh, we see right now surrounding us AI is taking over. So the world is advancing and especially in our medical field too, especially for the diagnosis. Uh, and what uh, we have seen is that in our medical diagnosis, we have to be sure that it is that particular disease. It is not that it may be, mm. it can be. Because it depends, all these things, the diagnosis will lead to the treatment of the patient Correct. and how we treat. So as a physician, as a uh, pulmonologist, for my patient, whatever the diagnosis is, I want it to be that whatever I told like a patient, you're suffering from this, mm. that I have a proof telling that yes, I got it and you're suffering this from this. Is, this is yes. what it is. Because it, because if the treatment goes something else and if the diagnosis happens to be something else, it's lost for the patient and for me also. Correct. So yeah, to be specific for the diagnosis, interventional is necessary. Like how I told you, like for the diagnosis of cancer, intervention is required. Now for the diagnosis of pleural fluid, uh, pl pleural effusion, what is the cause? Because those tests that we are doing routinely it just suggest if you okay. see the reports for example if you, um, uh, you read a ct report ct scan report mm. for example they'll tell like possibility of cancer or yes. possibility of this kindly correlate okay. kindly do biopsy for so, the test yes so how do we do that so that helps in aiding the diagnosis for confirming the diagnosis so what you're saying is that your radiological tests your clinical your imaging is only to give you an idea of what it could be. Yes, what it could be. And actually that helps us because they are giving us an insight that this may be. So we do the intervention and do the procedure to confirm that. For okay. example, I'll just uh, tell you uh, pleural effusion. For mm. example, for pleural effusion, we perform something called as thoracoscopy, as I've mentioned before. Okay. So the most common cause of pleural effusion is tuberculosis, TB. Yes. Yeah. So we do certain tests to prove that it is TB. And uh, one most important test is, uh, two important tests are there. One is known as pleural fluid uh, that we send for ADA. If it is high, we consider possibility of tuberculosis. It's okay. not that it is tuberculosis. Yes. Because there are many certain other conditions which causes increase in high ADA. Okay. But it is suggestive. And second thing is that we uh, uh, send a fluid for uh, micro, uh, this one, uh, test for the TB bacteria. Okay. That is known as CBNAT. Yes. So that detects the uh, TB in the fluid. So the detection rate of CBNAT in plural fluid is not high. It is around some 30%. Okay. In, uh, someone has told it is 25%, someone has told it is 40%. So if we get the bacteria in the fluid, then we don't have to do anything. We because don't have then to you do know for sure. Yes, for sure. But what about the other 60 percent, 70 percent, where we don't know? Okay. Only the ADSI, we have not found the bacteria. Hmm. So that's why like thoracoscopy is indicated in effusion where there is no fully diagnosed. And sometimes what happens is that a uh, patient comes to us quite late. They don't come to us very early. They'll come to us maybe after a month or after two weeks. When the pain weeks. is unbearable. Yes. yes. And where they're feeling fully breathless. Can't so what happens is that that effusion which is there, basically it's like a sac filled with fluid. Mm -hmm. So because of long-standing, uh, you know, it's there, fluid. it becomes like sacs. 
that is okay. known as septations like how grapes yes grapes are like they are one one uh, you know single, grapes yes. yeah single so even the fluid inside becomes like that okay so that becomes difficult now so how do you you know help the patient okay we have diagnosed the patient a uh, possibility to be having tb mm. and then we give the treatment by god's grace sometimes like it helps helps yes but there are some patients whom i have seen and recently also just last week i saw one patient like based on everything was given the treatment of uh, you know uh, tb everything but some residual remain in so, the lung yeah in the lung so if we do a thoracoscopy break all the septations you know take out all the fluid and just relieve the patient off at once and we have the diagnosis also that it is tb or not Okay. Yeah. So that helps, because there are many other patients also like who may not be have having this tuberculosis and they take taking the drug. Because we need to confirm the diagnosis, and now the national tuberculosis program also has become very strict, telling that you just cannot you know give the TB give. drugs based on you know clinical just like that. We need to have a microbiological confirmation. And we have to try. It's a long try. treatment. Yes, it's a long treatment. So uh, when we are treating that, also we have to keep in mind that also, like patient has to undergo so much yes. that he has to ha take the treatment for six months because when we are sick, we take antibiotics for five days. Correct. And for that also, like we are after two three days Unable, we forget. Yes. Yes. So we have to think about a patient who has to take the treatment for six, six months. Six months, nine months. Yes, even. sometimes. So that's why it's required. And second thing is that now if if it is TB also there are. two types like mainly the normal tuberculosis okay. and other one is which is known as mdr that is multi drug resistant okay yeah so the multi drug resistant again the treatment is 11 to 13 months oh okay yeah so there are so in order to distinguish that also we have to find out the organism so which which uh, bacteria yes is? whether it is the normal which is not like which is uh, like sensitive to all the drugs or which okay. is resistant So this also you get through clinical uh, no. microbiological test. Yes, through microbiological test. So like I told you in plural effusion, if we get it in the fluid, that is fine. That will tell us whether it is first of all it is TB and second thing whether it is sensitive or resistant. Okay. But if we don't get that, and we just treat the patient, hmm. it can be an MDR also, which will recur. It's then re yes, becomes recurrent. Yes. Uh, yeah, because uh, the it is resistant to the drug, so the, uh, the patient won't be well. it won uh, it won cure the patient so that's why like uh, we uh, what i have learned and what i have uh, like uh, got from my experience in two years after doing this intervention is that we usually do th thoracoscopy for all the patients and the results are quite good and then in all these patients also we have found out that at least out of 100 patients 7 to 8 patients were found out to be mdr if you wouldn't have done that they would have gone for the normal treatment which would not have helped yes, at all yes the patient and it would have been something else so that's why it's important doctor before we wrap up i mean i know you spoke uh, you know such a lot about what is um, pulmonology and interventional pulmonology is there any advice that you would like to give our audience uh, you know taking care maybe lung health uh yeah uh, so basically is that first of all we have to uh, be healthy he live a healthy lifestyle do exercises and second thing is that uh, we all know that our whole environment is filled with dust filled with all this uh, toxic uh, substances which is all in the air so basically we have to protect ourselves from that and especially the first thing nowadays it has become a trend that everyone smokes and smoking is has become a uh, you know um, trending uh, culture among everyone Uh, maybe it is the young ones or the mm. old ones or the middle age everyone so basically first is like uh, stop smoking because uh, smoking compromises it, uh, compromises yourself also and secondly it compromises the um, other person who are around nearby you, yes. yeah around you because it has been uh, research has told that even after you smoke like in the bathroom or wherever in the room mm. it still remains in the room for quite a very long time Okay. So that is one thing, um, and yeah, uh, there is uh, nothing much that you can do about the surroundings environment. It's just that you have to stay healthy, uh, stop smoking, and yeah, and lead a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Thank you, doctor, so much yeah. for your insights and your expertise. I'm sure uh, you know uh, our audience has been enlightened. Yeah. It's been such a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Yeah. Doctor John Muchahari is available. 
every day, Monday to Saturday, 9 to 5 p.m. at Manipal Hospitals, Goa. Uh, he's also on call in case of emergencies, 24 hours, doctor, yes. yes. Uh, thank you all for joining in. I hope uh, you found today's session quite enlightening. Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, this is Heather saying bye for today. Until the next one, keep watching Prudent Media.